Hello friends, Steve Blankert here again and with the continuing saga of the generator rebuild project. This is part 8 of this uh, series, so I want to show you where I'm at. Uh, the last part, part 7, I showed you the field coils that were all finished and ready, ready to go. I had a few more things to do. So tonight I installed the field coils and you can see them here. They are inside the generator case now and I'll tell you this is this is not an easy thing to get them set in there properly and I'll tell you why. They, the clearance between the, the pole shoes and the armature is only five to ten thousandths of an inch. So these shoes have to be seated perfectly tight up against the side of the case and they can't be cocked one way or the other. Uh, now they have a big rounded back so they pretty much are self-fitting but you really got to get them tight. And I told you I used this impact wrench to remove them and I used that to set them back in place again also. I tighten them up by hand as much as possible and then I set them down on a hard concrete floor with a little bit of padding and I use the, the mallet and the impact wrench to tighten these screws and get them set so it pulls those shoes completely tight and it compresses the coils a little bit also. And then I'll test fit the armature to make sure it fits in. So I think I got it. It took a little bit of work to get it in there. Uh, but it's really important to get those tight, really, really tight, and make sure they're seated properly so the armature will fit because of the really tight clearance. So that's the field coils. I installed the sealed bearing in the uh, pulley end here. I used the old bearing re retainers in here. I still have those, and I have the old felt seals in just just to keep the felt seals in, just a little dust, I guess, uh, kind of a dust protection. They're not really needed, but uh, with the sealed bearing now, um, you don't have to worry about oil getting everywhere. And I plugged the hole right up here where the uh, oiler was. I used a, a piece of lead, uh, 31 caliber round lead ball and pounded it in and just, you know, flattened it out. So that's how I sealed that. So this end, the, the uh, pulley end is ready to go. Uh, the pulley's painted. And I'll tell you, my paint job hadn't been very good. Trying to paint when it's 20 degrees outside has been pretty tough. So uh, it's a serviceable paint job, but that's about it. Um, now I want to talk about the commutator end bearing. There's, uh, this is a pretty interesting little setup they have here. I want to take a little time to explain this. I hope we can get the light in here. So as you remember, uh, I had to get a new bushing for it. Uh, now this is the old bushing, and remember I told about how it's got that slot in there for the felt wick to lay in. So I got the new bushing came in today, and I set it up in the milling machine, and I milled the slot just like this one here. Now you can do this with a with a quarter inch round file also. Um, I realize not everybody has a milling machine, so but but it's easy to do with a round file. Do the same thing, and uh, if you can see in there, let's see if I can get this where you can. Zoom in, you can see, you can see the wick laying in there, and it just rubs up against the side of the uh, end of the, right here on the end of that uh, shaft, and that keeps it lubricated. So it's a pretty, it's a pretty interesting uh, setup. Now here's the wick down here, and this is an oil cavity. Now right where these two holes are here and here is the oil level, and the end cap that goes on here has a little sliding door here there where you add oil and then this hole I'm sorry I'm kind of running out of fingers here right there that's the overflow hole so you can't overfill it but we'll fill it up to that level and if you put any more oil than that it'll start running out so it will, won't uh, will overflow so it keeps that oil cavity up to about where those screws are filled with oil and that saturates the wick and gets drawn up by capillary action to lubricate the bushing now, there's also drain holes at the top and bottom. If there's too much oil, it drains back. Um, another thing I want to say, tell you about this bushing, when you take it out, you want to remove it coming out, not in. And the reason is there's an oil collector on the inside here. That's this sheet metal ring here that keeps any excess oil that drains it back uh, into those drain holes in there and drains it back out. And if you try to push the bushing out, it's going to kind of mess up that, that oil collector. So what I use to get that out is a blind bushing puller, which is one of these. It's a slide hammer, has an expanding mandrel. It just fits in, and I stick that in from the, from the outside in, get behind the bushing, and then just slide hammer, and it'll pull that bushing out. Uh, so that way you're not going to damage that oil collector on the back side. 
So uh, anyway, so this is ready to go back together. Um, I think I'm gonna. I've got the old gasket I was able to save, but I think I'm gonna, just going to use this as a pattern, and I'm going to go ahead and make a cut out a couple new ones. Uh, I do see some of the vendors do sell these, so you don't have to do that if you're making an order to uh, some of the well-known vendors. You can just go ahead and order one, but uh, uh, I'll just go ahead and cut one out. Now, in the last video, I also mentioned uh, the carbon brushes, so I want to talk about those a little bit now. These are the brushes that were in it when I pulled it apart, and these are the wrong ones. Now, I was I was able to get some new old stock Autolite brushes. These are the actual correct original brushes for this generator, and this is this is what they look like here. So when you compare that one of the new ones to the, what was in it, you can clearly see there's a big difference. The big difference being there's two wires coming off of the Autolite one, and there's only one wire here. Now remember, this is a 6-volt generator. This is a 12-volt brush. It only has a single lead coming off of it. This one, as a 6-volt brush, has two leads that's the same size as the single lead coming off of this. Now remember, 6 volts, because it's 6 volts for that same voltage, it's got to carry twice the amperage that uh, a 12 volt one does. So these, this is the correct brush. It's a double lead brush uh, wires coming off of the carbon brush. Um, and surprisingly, these were about 15 bucks. I bought them off of eBay. Um, but the good news is you can get a modern brush that's just like, the, is, is correct for this. It's a Standard Products EX57. Uh, you can Google it. Uh, you can order them online and it looks just like this. And they're uh, you know, about the same price I think I paid for these, or you know, seven, eight, nine dollars a piece, maybe something like that. But since I got was able to get some new old stock ones, I'm going to use these. Um, so they're you know, it's nice when you can still get new old stock parts, uh, you can get that. So um, I will be using these now. When I assemble it, um, I'm, I'm close to assembling it, I may start putting it together tomorrow. Um, but the one, one thing before I want to do before that is you want to seat these brushes. And I only have two hands here. One's holding the camera, so I really can't show you this entirely. But the way you seat these brushes, um, what you do, you're going to take this commutator head, uh, the end piece here, and I have a piece of 400 grit sandpaper cut here that's about the width of the commutator. And what you do is you lay this on here with the grit facing out. Now, I can't really do this entirely, but this is, um, so you'd wrap it around like that, and then with the sandpaper on there, I'm running out of hands, I would put the commutator head on, and then put a brush in here. And then, with a brush in place, you take that sandpaper that's underneath it, and you just pull the, pull the sandpaper out, out from underneath the brush, and it's going to sand the end of the brush and contour, because the commutator is round. The edge of the brush, and I don't know if you can see this very well, while they're angled, they're not curved to fit the curve of the of the commutator. So you sand them with this 400 grit sandpaper, and you just pull that pull that sandpaper up underneath the brush oh, three or four times, and that will contour the face of the brush to the commutator. And that way, when it starts running, it'll they'll already be seated in, and uh, and they'll start charging right away. If you don't do that, uh, it takes a while for them to wear in till they till they get that curve and they and they seat and make contact on the commutator properly. So that's a, it's easy to do. Just make sure you rinse it all off with some of that electrical contact cleaner when you're all done. Get it flushed out, uh, and then you can assemble it, uh, you know, for the final time. So uh, let's see. Anything else I want to talk about today? Um, no, I think that's it. Uh, so probably uh, maybe tomorrow we'll see what the weather looks like. I got some things I need to do, um, and I'll start putting this together, and we'll we'll start getting it buttoned up. So um, I think that's it for right now. If you got any questions, let me know. Um, I think so far it's come along pretty good. Uh, it's been kind of a fun project to do, so I hope you're all getting something out of it. Uh, let me know if there's anything else you want to see. And um, I guess that's it for right now. We'll get back to you with, uh, with part nine uh, next day or two when we start buttoning it up. All right, thanks, folks. See you all later. Bye.